Today we're going to be checking out Service Stack Auto Query and how you can take an existing database and build web services that are fast, flexible and easy to use. Service Stack Auto Query and related tooling focuses on making your data accessible quickly while still enabling you to customize your web services. We're going to be using the Chinook sample database, which contains data centered around a digital media store, including tables for artists, albums, media tracks, invoices, and customers. It's still a common story that companies have valuable siloed data stores that either don't have web service access or are behind older technology stacks that are frustrating to use. Service Stack Auto Query leverages ServiceX's own ORM called ORM Lite and provides an intent-based self-descriptive set of APIs to make the data easy to query. Before getting started building our application, there are a few things you'll need to install to follow along. The .NET SDK 5.0 or higher, the Service Stack X tool, and Docker and Docker Compose for setting up deployments. The full application and write-up can be found on GitHub under netcoreapps slash chinook, link in the description. First, we're gonna create a new GitHub repository. At the top right, copy the Git URL and clone it to your local machine. Once cloned locally, navigate into the new directory and run x new space web space chinook, where chinook is the name of your project and web is the name of the x new template. If you don't have the service stack x tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install gx. Before we start wiring up our empty web application, we'll need the database itself. The easiest way to use the chinook sample database is via SQLite. This can be downloaded using our xmix tool as shown, or if you google for it, you'll find it under sqlite-tutorial.net. Make sure the chinook.sqlite file is in the app host project, and then we'll move on to configuring our application's access to the data. We're going to use the xmix tool for configuring two more components. xmix auto crud gen will configure the auto query feature to use the generated crud services. XMix SQLite will add the required NuGet packages, as well as set up a default connection to an in-memory database. We can change this connection configuration to point to our chinook.sqlite file. Now you can build and run your application locally and navigate to the metadata page. Here you will see all the CRUD operations for the tables in the Chinook database. We can use the table names in our routes to query our database. AutoQuery has a large amount of implicit conventions built in, as well as the ability to customize your queries in your normal service stack services. An example of using these query APIs would be to filter artists with IDs between 1 and 100 and those with names starting with F. All the expected querying functions are available, for example controlling order buys, skip and take to do paging, as well as custom fields and applying even custom JSON configuration. For example, here we are combining multiple features to filter tracks that use the following rules. Track names that contain heart, ordering by the track name, skipping 5 and taking 10, restricting the output fields to track ID, name and milliseconds, and customizing the JSON output to exclude default values. All APIs support the standard service stack HTTP content negotiation options. For example, you can append the .json suffix at the end of a route to return the JSON format. With just a bit of configuration, AutoQuery has exposed all the services we need to query and manage our tables in our database. The way this works is ServiceX AutoGen feature creates typed ServiceX services in memory based on the configured relational database schema at startup. Because they're just ServiceX services, they can take advantage of the ecosystem of features that come with normal ServiceX services, like add ServiceX reference for generating rich typed APIs around supported languages. To extend and enhance these services, we'll need to convert them into code-first services since at the moment the model DTOs only exist in memory. Before we run our application, uncomment the add data contract attribute and leave it equal to false. We can migrate our app to code-first using the X tool. Run your application with the generated services enabled, navigate to your service model directory within a terminal, and run x c -sharp, your local host address, hyphen path, slash crud slash all slash c -sharp. This command generates the c -sharp models and APIs that would otherwise be generated at startup. This also means we no longer need the auto query feature option generate crud services which is in the configure.autoquery.cs file. After a clean rebuild and restart, our application now has the same functionality as before except now we have the full c -sharp code to easily extend and enhance. An important trait of service stack is that its service models are symmetrical. 
where the same server DTOs used to define your service contracts can be used as is in its smart generic service clients to enable an end-to-end -end typed API. A concrete example of this is here where we had the Chinook application running in the background while we've created a brand new console application as a client. We then import servicestack.client from NuGet to use the smart generic service client to connect to our service stack host, and then use the X tool to add a service stack reference in the c -sharp language. The DTOs come down from the running service and we can create a new track in our Chinook API with our end-to-end -end typed client. Here we're using Gangnam Style by Psy. We're creating the artist, the albums, and creating the track, and then outputting it to the terminal. We can then grab the track ID from the output and use it in the tracks auto query API to validate that it's been entered into the database. Before getting to deployments, let's extend query artists and query tracks so they have more typed information when making queries. For example, with query artists, we can add the property artists ID between as a long array and name start with as a string. For query tracks, we'll just add name contains. Going back to our console application, we'll update our service tech reference using XC Sharp and then the name of the DTOs file. Now our client console application DTOs reflect the service contracts on the server, and our client can benefit from that additional type information when making queries. As a quick recap for what we've done, we started with an existing database and quickly added the ability to manage and query the data through the generated CRUD services. As our needs changed to extend these services, we then quickly moved to a code-first approach, leveraging the Service Stack X tool. We created a console client and took advantage of Add Service Stack Reference, which leverages the symmetrical nature of our service models. Finally, we extended our auto query DTOs to allow our typed clients to have a better development experience. Now our application is ready, we can commit the code and push it to our GitHub repository. We're going to be using GitHub Actions as our CI and deploy to a single Linux host running Docker and Docker Compose. This setup is ideal for prototypes or low traffic applications. The Service Stack X tool has a mixed template called Release GHR Vanilla. We're going to use this template to speed up our setup process. In the root of your repository, use the command xmix space build space release hyphen ghr hyphen vanilla. Commit the generated files and push them to your GitHub repository. Navigating to our GitHub repository and looking at our actions, we'll see that we have a build and release process, and actually that a build process is already run. This process builds and tests our .NET application. Before we can run our release workflow, we'll need to make sure the database is included in our deployments. For our SQLite file, make the build action content and make sure a copy to output directory is copy if newer. Next is setting up our server, and we're going to be using a digital ocean droplet as they cost just $5 a month, and with this workflow, we can reuse the server for multiple applications. For our droplet options, we're going to be using Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, a basic plan at $5 a month, Select an appropriate region, default VPC, and for authentication, select SSH keys. Make sure to create a new one and follow the instructions on the right-hand side when prompted. Once your droplet has started, enable the floating IP. Now that our droplet is running and has a public static IP address, we'll want to set up Docker and Docker Compose. Check out the full tutorial for the scripts that we're running here to get these installed. Next, we want to copy up a Docker Compose file that was generated by our mix template. Here we're using SCP to do this. Back on our droplet, we'll then run Docker Compose on this Nginx Docker Compose file. This will run two containers, one an Nginx proxy, another an Nginx proxy companion for Let's Encrypt. These two containers together will host our application with TLS enabled. And lastly, before we set up our GitHub repository for deployments, we need to set up an A record subdomain. This record should point to your floating IP address of your droplet. With our server and DNS setup completed, we now move to our GitHub repository. The release workflow from the mix template requires six secrets. The CRPAT is a GitHub personal token with read-write access to GitHub's container registry. The deploy host should be the subdomain A record, which is pointing to your server's IP. The deploy port should be the SSH port open to your server, usually port 22. Your deploy username should be the username on the remote server used to run your Docker application. Your deploy key will be your SSH private key, and it will be used by GitHub Actions to remotely deploy your application. And the Let's Encrypt email will be an email address for Let's Encrypt TLS certificate generation. 
Once these secrets have been added to your GitHub repository, you can then create a release to deploy your application. Releases can be found on the right-hand side of your repository. Publish a release and go to Actions to see the workflow running. This is building your application into a Docker image and publishing it to the GitHub container repository. Our next step is remotely connecting to our server via SSH and running Docker Compose with authentication to our GitHub container repository. The Nginx proxy is then forwarding requests to our Docker container, which is running configured with that subdomain. With our Chinook application deployed and hosted at chinook.netcore.io, we'll briefly demonstrate two other server stack tools, one for exploring and managing data, another to speed up native client application development. First, ServiceStack Studio. ServiceStack Studio can be run locally via installing the ServiceStack app tool. This can be done using the command .NET tool install -g app. Be sure to have the latest .NET 5 SDK installed and use the command app run studio. This will launch ServiceStack Studio where you'll be greeted to provide a base URL to a running ServiceStack application. Entering our newly deployed Chinook app address, we'll see a button appear showing that auto query functionality is available. Here we can search for an artist, create one if it is missing, and add an album related to that artist, all without needing to build a specific UI. There are more features in ServiceStack Studio, including user management, validation creation, and others, which you can check out in the ServiceStack docs. Moving on to helping developers build native client apps, we have Instant Client Apps, which is available at apps.servicestack.net. Here we also provide the base URL for our application and can see pre-made client apps in multiple languages and platforms. Check out our feature highlight video that walks through using Instant Client Apps to help build a Flutter Android application for visualizing data. In this walkthrough, we started with a SQLite database where we used mixed templates to set up our project quickly so we could query and manage the data via services thanks to AutoQuery. We also used the ServiceStack X tool to migrate our AutoQuery services to use the code first approach, demonstrate add ServiceStack reference for clients, and rapidly set up our deployments via GitHub Actions. Finally, we demonstrate how we can leverage ServiceStack Studio for managing data and instant client apps for jumpstarting our native client app development. Features like auto query and related tooling are designed to help you get the most out of your service stack applications. We'll be making more of these application walkthrough videos, so let us know what features you'd like to see. I hope this video showed you something useful, and thanks for watching.